Hebrews 8, 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Early on in the epistle to the Hebrews, the Lord is spoken of as an apostle, and here he is spoken of as a minister. A minister in the New Testament is nothing more than a servant, and in the New Bibles that word is changed to a slave, but in the King James they correctly translate it to servant. 3. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was administered of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For, see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shown to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. The only mediator between God and man is Jesus Christ. Nobody else can mediate. Mary cannot mediate. The saints that are dead cannot mediate. We can pray to the Lord as living saints on the earth, and we can pray for one another. But uh, the minute you pray to dead people, or you call on dead people to intercede for you, you are falling under the sin of necromancing. It's a very dangerous heresy. It's something which has no precedent in Scripture. And the reason and the, and the way that the Catholics get around this is to go to apocryphal books, books which were never inspired. 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. If you go to Jeremiah 31, scripture with scripture, Jeremiah 31, 31, the language is identical. Verse 31, Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Although I was a husbandman unto them, saith the Lord. Now you can read the rest of this chapter, and I would certainly invite you to do so. I'd also just quickly take you to uh, verse 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon, and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Now watch this. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me for ever. Pretty clear language here, and the context is speaking about the children of Israel, the land of Judah and the land of Israel. You cannot apply this doctrinally to people living today, those of us in the church age. Go back to Hebrews, verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbour and every man his brother saying know the Lord for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. I just want to stop there and lay my cards on the table and say that I believe that this has some eschatological application. I believe in the tribulation when the Lord sends the 144,000 Jewish evangelists, which are all male, into the world. It's going to be a similar rerun to the day of Pentecost. And the reason I think this has some application to the Jews 
is because a lot of Jewish people living today are very agnostic and very secular and uh, most Jews that I know and have spoken to don't even know what tribe they are from or what lineage they have during the Second World War and uh, during the dark days of the uh, concentration camps in fact even after the war and before the war with the build up to uh, Hitler's march on Europe a lot of Jews changed their religion and uh, converted to Catholicism uh, to Anglicanism and other religions just to get away from the stigma which was uh, being whipped up by the German propaganda machine and subsequently a lot of Jews have no idea of where they come from and a lot of famous Hollywood actors changed their names in the 30s and 40s and 50s and it's only now two or three generations later that their grandchildren want to know where they come from but here it says that he's going to be a god to them and they're going to be a people to him 12 for i will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will i remember no more again you can go back to romans 10 and compare this with uh scripture for the church age i see no reason why you can't apply this to anybody living today jew or gentile and say that uh, the lord has made an atonement for all people and i've dealt with that in previous videos even though the wider application is to the jews not only in the first century when they were reading this but in the great tribulation uh, period still to come uh, where the lord is going to turn all his attention to the jews per se once the church which is neither jew nor gentile uh, once the bride is being raptured and 13 in that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away the first covenant couldn't save anybody it was only provided temporarily the ordinances may have been given to be eternal but always keep the word eternal in mind where it says in your generations these two expressions nearly always go together the first covenant couldn't save anybody it was simply a covering until the messiah arrived and abolished the civil and ceremonial aspects of the law and uh, according to romans 13 8 it says oh no man anything but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law and uh, 9 says thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness thou shalt not covet and if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying namely thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and the gospel of mark says to love the lord thy god and to love thy neighbor as thyself on these all the law hangs in other words the law is fulfilled once you've believed in the lord and you trust him as your savior and once you love the lord with all your heart you will love your fellow man with all your heart but uh, like i say the old testament the old covenant was only given temporarily till the messiah arrived and uh, fulfilled it in his death burial and a resurrection